and welcome to Learn Your Color Computer. So let's begin. I'd like to say a few words about the biggest problem in the computer community today, and that's the closet computers. They're the ones that end up in your closet, alone and neglected, after a few fun hours with playing some games. This usually takes place a few months after Christmas, when somebody buys a color computer for the kids to play with. Then, when the fun wears off, into the closet it goes, to sit and gather dust, never to realize its full potential. Some folks may have just had it break down on them and decided not to get it fixed, even for a blown fuse. Well, this has gone on for too long now. With the millions of computers in people's homes today, only a few thousand of them have taken the time to learn their computer and take advantage of the remarkable power available in the small white case. Some people have even used their computers to run their own businesses. But this is not enough. If everybody who owned a closet computer was to become a serious color computer user, we'd be a more powerful group than any other. And this is what the series of shows is all about. So let's begin. Hi, and welcome to the second installment of Learn Your Color Computer. We're going to start you learning the pro basic programming language. Today, we're going to start you off by showing you the difference between variables, constants, and how they relate to strings and numbers. This will be followed by showing you how to use the commands of a new input, go to, run, print, clear screen, sound, list, and the if-then-else construct. First, we'll start with variables. Variables contain information in numeric or text form and can be changed at any time during program execution. Think of a variable as a place in the computer's memory where you can store some temporary information and you can change the information at any time you feel like it. A constant, on the other hand, is similar to a variable except the information does not change. When you're writing a program, you must use either one or two characters for the variable name. If it's a variable containing text, it must be followed by a dollar sign, which in, during programming will be pronounced string. The characters you use to make your variable name must be composed of first a capital letter from A to Z and a number or a number from 0 to 9. However, the name must always begin with a capital letter. Some good examples of names would include A, 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 A1, A string, B, A, and B0 string. Some bad examples would be 1A, Q string, 4, 9 string. Notice how each of these bad names breaks a rule of variable naming. The 1A began the name with a 1 instead of the required capital letter. The Q string, starting with the lowercase q, it began with a letter, but it's not a capital letter. The 4 has no letter whatsoever, as does the 9 string. By now, you may or may not have wondered what would happen if you were to use a variable name which has more than two letters in length. Simple. Say if you had three string variables, with the first one called, and the second one is called, and the third one is called, what would happen in this situation 
is that the computer would interpret all three variables as the same variable. If you assign a value of A to this string, this string equal quote A quote. And typed print th string or print that string. The computer will respond by printing a letter A on your screen. This is because the computer is ignoring everything after the th and making all the variables equal to th string as far as the computer is concerned. What this suggests is that the first two characters of their variable name are the only letters that the computer will recognize. The rest, with the exception of the dollar sign, are totally ignored. Now, if, now you're probably wondering what all this string stuff about. Well, it's really simple. A string is a set of numbers or letters enclosed between a pair of quotes. Some fine examples of strings would be this string equal quote a quote. What? How did I get They're enclosed in a pair of quotes, making them strings. You can assign a string to any valid variable or constant that has the dollar sign suffix on it. An example of what of that would be a a string equals this is a string variable quote print a a string and the computer will respond by placing the sentence of this is a string variable on your screen. To better understand, let's add another string to our collection. We'll call it a b string equals quote comma space this is another variable, quote. Now we have a second variable with the words, this is another variable inside of it. Now let's do some actual string adding. Type this, a c string equals a a string plus b b string. At this point, we have three string variables created, the third of which is a combination of the first and second string variables. Let's take a look at them. Type this. Print a a string print a b string print a c string. It's now obvious that the third string variable of a string is indeed a product of adding a a string and a b string together. So far, all you've seen your computer do is silently print on a green screen. But is this the only color there is? No. That's why we have the clear screen command. It'll allow you to clear the screen to one of nine colors, ranging from zero to eight. To use this command, to simply clear the screen, just type C L S and press the enter key. To clear the screen to another color, type C L S, open parentheses, three, close parentheses, and press the enter key. 
Now your computer has cleared its screen to a nifty shade of blue with a green stripe at the top of it. Why the green stripe? That's because the computer cannot print anything on any color except green. Try typing a few more letters and you'll see it gives them a green background as well. The computer, the, I mean the colors and their values are as follows. Zero equals black, one equals green, two equals yellow, three equals blue, four equals red, five equals buff or white, six equals cyan or bluish gray, seven equals magenta or violet, and eight equals orange. If you press the, if you enter the CLS command with one of these numbers in the parentheses, the screen will clear to that corresponding color. Next, we'll take care of the silence by using the sound command. The sound command is used with two variables separated by a comma. The first variable is the pitch of the tone. The second variable is the duration of the tone. Each of these variables has a range from 1 to 255. Try typing this. 1, comma, 100. If you didn't hear anything, turn up the volume level on your television set and try it again. What you heard was six seconds of the lowest tone the computer can hum. Want to hear the highest? Type this. Sound 255 comma 100, followed by pressing enter. The duration is measured in one in six one hundredths of a second. So a value of one would give a tone duration of six one hundredths of a second. The sound command can be used many times in a sequence to create music if you should so desire. So that you can make some simple but effective sound effects. To prove the computer's competence as a music generator, type in this short one line program. For T equals 89 2 176, step 18, colon, sound, T, comma, 5, colon, next, T. As soon as you press the enter key at the end of the line, the computer plays a simple musical scale starting with middle C or a tone number 89, stopping at the next higher C note, or tone 176. As soon as you press the enter key at the end of the line, the computer plays a musical scale starting with middle C, or a tone number 89, and ends at the next higher C note, or tone number 76. Now we're going to show you about the command called new. The new command is used to erase anything of a program or variable that might be in the computer's memory, and allows you to start fresh. It's as simple as that. The new command is normally used by itself outside of a program but there's no rule that says you can't use it inside of a program. If you do use it on the inside of a program, the program will stop when the new command is encountered and the memory will be erased as though there was never a program there to begin with. Before we go any farther, 
let's go over what line numbers are for and how they help us to write better programs. Line numbers are used to control the flow of a program and to allow us to go directly to any part of the program we want to go to. Unless you tell it otherwise, the program will start executing at the first or lowest line number and will continue into the program in the numeric sequence of the line numbers. Now type this. 10. Print, quote, hi, comma, I'm your color computer, quote, followed by pressing the enter key. Be sure you type in the number 10 first. It's very important. Now type run, followed by pressing the enter key. The computer proceeds to run your one line program. Since that worked so well, let's add another line to the program. Type this. 20, print, quote, what is your name? Quote. Followed by pressing the enter key, as usual. Now type list, followed by pressing the enter key. The computer obeys and lists your two-line program. The computer obeys and lists your two-line program. Now what do you think will happen when you try to run this program? Try it. Type run. Followed by pressing the enter key. The computer prints. The computer prints. Hi, I'm your color computer. What's your name? Answer the computer's question by typing in your name and pressing the enter key. You'll probably get a message that says syntax error. This is what we call a syntax error. You get one of those every time you try to communicate with the computer in a way that it doesn't understand. Other error messages will appear on your screen from time to time while you learn to use the basic language. An understanding of what these errors are and what their meanings are will be of great help to you. A complete list of error messages and their meanings can be found in the back of your computer's manual. Study them in your spare time and get to know the commands and the messages. Now, to avoid another error message, let's issue a command to the computer which will allow us to enter information. Type the following line. Line 30, input a string. This will tell the computer to stop and wait for you to type something, which it will then assign to the string variable of a string. The input command, is you, as used here, allows you to do its minimum function. The input command can also be used to print a message before getting the information. And it can also be used with several variables, all separated by commas. We'll cover these functions in a few minutes. But for now, let's just work with the minimal function. Now add this line to your program. Line 40, print, quote, hi, comma, quote, semicolon, a string. Now run the program as you did before using the run command. When you see the question mark appear on your screen, it's waiting for you to type something. The results will vary depending on what you typed at the question mark. For example, if you typed in your name as being Fred, you would get something like this. 
run, press enter. Fred. It's a nifty little program we've got here so far. And it's fun to run it over and over again. Trying different inputs of different names. Wouldn't you like it to make it run continuously? You can. Enter the following line. 50, go to 20, enter. This tells the computer that we want to go back to line 20, which it does. And now you don't have to keep typing the run command over and over. Whenever you use the go to command in a program, it's there as a reference to where you would like the program to be redirected to. In this case, we've specified line number 20. This means that each time the program encounters this line, it will immediately jump over to line number 20 and resume program execution from there. Now say you wanted to add something special for a certain person. You can do this by using the if-then construct. Add the following line to your program. Line 35. If a string equal, quote, Fred, quote, then print, quote, I like Fred, quote. This tells BASIC that if the string data in the variable a string is equal to the string of Fred, then print the string I like Fred. If all if then constructs use the if and then commands. If one is missing while the other is present, you'll get an error message on your screen indicating which one is missing. What this means is that if is that the if and then commands allow you to set a single condition or a group of conditions to be, to be met before executing another function. There is, however, an optional command that can be used with the if-then-else construct. It's the else command. Suppose you wanted the program to do something else in case the conditions of the if-then were not met. Let's change line number 35 to this. Line 35. If a string equal, quote, Fred, quote, then print, quote, I like Fred, quote else, print, quote, you're not Fred, quote. This tells BASIC that if A string is not equal to Fred, then print, you're not Fred, on the screen. Whatever comes after the else command is what the command is supposed to do if the conditions of the if-then are not met. Now say there's a situation where you wanted to start at line 30 of the program instead of lines 10 and 20. You can easily specify what line you want the program to start on by typing run 30, followed by pressing the Enter key. The program will start running at line number 30. You can, however, specify any line number in the program you want to start running at. Now let's go over those extra functions of the input command that I told you about earlier in the show. First, change line number 20 
to a print command by typing 20 print. Now let's retype line number 30 like this. Line 30, input, quote, what is your name? Space, quote, semicolon, a string. Now run the program, and you'll notice that not much changed in the program at all. But we do know for sure there is a change. That change was getting the input command to print a message. This message is called a prompt. And it can be any string you want to be. But there is a couple of limitations to this. First, the string used as, as the message must always be a string inside of quotes. No variable or constant strings can be used. Also, you can't have or use a number for your message unless it's inside of the quotes. Other than that, the command will work fine. I also promised to show you how to use multiple variables on the input command. This is done by simply tacking them onto the end of the first variable, separated by commas. As an example, let's retype line 30 to do this. Line 30, input, quote, what's your name, space, quote, semicolon, a string, comma B, comma C, comma D. Notice how the extra variables of B, C, and D follow the A string variable and are separated by commas. Now run the program again. Like run. Notice how I have to type in a name this time. The next line on the screen has a pair of question marks. This is where the second variable of B comes into play. Enter a number and another one. Now the input command is run out of variables and returns control back over to the program. Well, that's about all the time we have left for this show. Tune in again next time but we'll continue to show you how to learn your color computer. Remember, if you have a problem with any of the information we've supplied, give us a call. One of our many experienced members of our club will be more than glad to help you with your information. If you missed a show, let us know. We can have a tape of the show you missed ready for you to view at the next meeting. That's about all the time we have for now. So tune in again next time when we continue to learn your color computer.